For the second time this season, the Saints have marched back to 500. But now here in Week 16, it's time to march towards the playoffs, but they do need some help. Hey, how are you folks? Jason Norwood, NFL.com's hey, Pat Jason. Kerwin with you on the NFL Previews presented by Comcast. And Pat, let's take a look at the NFC playoff picture as far as the wild card right. goes. New Orleans, right there at 7-7 seven and seven behind New York and Minnesota. And of the 7-7 seven and seven teams or below, they have the best conference record. They still have two games left in the NFC, and it starts this weekend with Philly. But a loss this weekend coupled with a Minnesota win against the Redskins and they're out of the playoffs. So what do the Saints have to come out and do that the Cowboys couldn't do against the Eagles' defense? Well, I, the Saints have to come out. They, first of all, they're not going to have all this information in front of them. They're going to have to play the game because I think the Vikings play after them. So they just Vikings go out. play Sunday night, yep. They just go out and play the game like they're in the playoffs if they win. That's how they'll play this football game. They haven't been a great home team. They know that, but they're better now. You throw the beginning of the season out a little bit, I think, and I said this to you last week, Stecker has stabilized what they should be doing on offense, keep them inside, let them run the ball. Reggie's hinting that he might be able to play. I'm not buying it right away, but if Reggie comes back, keep him in the slot, make him a receiver, let Steck do the inside work. Well, that's a big part of it, too. The Saints' offense the last two weeks has been much better. Is it mm -hmm. because of Aaron Stecker? You know, Stecker does a nice job inside of just keeping the run legitimate, but where they're doing a great job, and they've been doing a good job for a while, now is protecting Breeze. He's sacked once every 45 pass attempts. He might have the best situation possible. And when you try to blitz him, which is what people have tried to do, then he's hitting that short seam route to Marquise Colson, a guy I thought had a chance to make the Pro Bowl this year, and they've been striking people dead with that short passing attack like that. The other thing about the Saints, keep in mind, they're the number one team in the NFL in the red zone. Get this, they score a touchdown 72% of the time they get in the red zone. Very impressive number. You know they're going to score points. Philly's going to have the pressure of scoring in this game. Oh, but you thought Dallas would score points against Philadelphia, too. Obviously, it hurt with Tony Romo's thumb injury and all that stuff, but Philly's defense last week came to play very well against Dallas. What do they take from that and implement in this game? Well, I think when you play Philly, you have to understand and respect the idea they're going to fire zone blitz you. They're going to bring people from all over. I went back and checked the stats on this. Philly has sacks from 11 different players on their football team. Tells you they'll come from anywhere. Jim Johnson, you know, they're going to play this game like it's their Super Bowl. Talked to Andy Reid yesterday. You know, he said the spirit of our team, considering all that's happened here, considering the situation, the playoff picture, all that business, we got a pretty group of, a big group of guys that are interested in playing well in this football game. He thinks his team's going to come out and play well because Donovan is healthy for the first time. Last week we saw him running around like the old Donovan. I think they want to take a look at 2008 right now. You talked to Andy Reid. Did he say anything about the hinting of the future of Donovan McNabb? Yeah, he did. He was real clear with me and, and kind of intense about it, actually. He said, Donovan McNabb is still one of the elite quarterbacks in this league, and you can argue with me all you want. He's got the credentials to back that statement up, and I see him here for a long time. And they make a good team together, these two guys, and both of them have been through an awful lot this year, and their respect for each other is immense. You don't let a quarterback like that go unless you can show me the name of the guy you think is going to do it. There's no chance they're going to leave Donovan McNabb out for sale in a trade. And the other guy you never let go, that's Brian Westbrook, who, by the way, is going to the yeah. Pro Bowl because he is the main hog for this uh, Philadelphia offense. All right, let's throw all the numbers into the computer, put it in. AccuScore is back with us here in Week 16, and here it is for this game. 56% of the time on the computer, the Saints came out victorious. Very close game. Pat? This is the hardest game of the, of the week for me to decide who to take in this game. I think the Eagles will give them all they can handle, but at the end of the day, like you said, Jason, they have a lot to play for. The playoffs were on the line. It's not like it, they're playing at 4 o'clock, and at 1 o'clock they found that they're eliminated. They will be entering this game. We already know it. Guarantee they're entering this game with the playoffs at stake. I think they'll play well enough to win. Breeze will lead them yeah, to it. Playoffs are at stake. Let me just clarify one more time. The Saints would have to lose, and the Vikings would have to win for the Saints right. to be eliminated, because if the Saints win, they're still in playoff contention no matter what happens the rest of the weekend. All right, folks, for more on this game or any other here in Week 16, be sure to stay with CBSSports.com and watch everything else on the CBS Audience Network. For NFL.com's Pat Kerwin, I'm Jason Moore with Take care.